Today we're going to talk about the meta cookie cutter builds and some changes that should happen in Outriders and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the meta cookie cutter builds and how we can actually change things for the meta. And if you guys want to see more Outriders content in the form of class builds, legendary farming, official and fan made lore, news updates and more, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any video. Okay, so if you don't know, the meta is generally an agreed upon strategy that is the most optimal way to play, win, to even get past a certain part in the game. Many people believe that when it comes to gaming, the meta is made by YouTubers and or streamers like myself, and this is actually highly incorrect. The strategy of a meta is thought up by the community. Mostly, those members in the community that are obsessed with damage numbers, best gear, class trees, and spreadsheets. These are the very smart guys and gals that get the information for their spreadsheets from data mines, which are pretty much the game files in conjunction with a lot of testing. There are tons of trial and error that goes into this process. These people happen to be our friends, family, followers, etc. Then we, YouTubers, relay the information to you guys. This is mostly the case unless a YouTuber happens to be that girl or guy that is obsessed with the damage numbers and the spreadsheets. That is how the meta is actually made. Also, the meta is normally end game content, things to be used in the end game, but can be used while playing the story and or campaign. So what weapons are the meta for Outriders? You ready for it? Death Shield, Death Shield, Death Shield, and you guessed it, Earthborn Renegade's Assault Rifle. Three out of the four classes in Outriders currently use Death Shield as part of their meta. The Trickster, the Pyromancer, and the Devastator. The only class that doesn't use Death Shield, but could, is the Technomancer, which uses the Earthborn Renegade's Assault Rifle. And it is the tactical variant, of course. Now, we are talking about the meta, the most optimal, not random weapons that people are actually using just to test around. Other weapons that are used are the Funeral Pyre for the Pyros and the Animoi for Devastators. Tricksters and Technomancers pretty much stick to one weapon the entire time that they are playing. But it's not just the weapons that make the meta. It's also the stats and the mods on the weapons. Speaking about mods, recently the mod Dark Sacrifice has seen a lot of play in many builds, including two of mine for my Technomancer and my Trickster build, which is an alternative build to the Death Shield build that everyone actually is using. I will put both builds at the end of this video if you guys would like to check those out. Dark Sacrifice has replaced Killing Spree on my Technomancer's weapon and is the second mod on my Trickster's primary weapon. But I'm not using the Death Shield for my Trickster. So, what are the mods on each of these weapons according to the meta? Well, for Technomancers, the Earthborn Renegades has Bone Shrapnel and Dark Sacrifice. For Pyros, their Death Shield has Fortress and Moaning Winds, and their Funeral Pyrate has Shadow Comet and Fortress. Tricksters are using Death Shield with Fortress and Dark Sacrifice, and Devastators are using their Death Shield with Fortress and Shadow Comet, and the Animoi with Moaning Winds and Fortress. Once again, we are talking about the meta, and I can't stress this enough, which is the most optimal gear and weapons, including the class tree, to use that most people are using. But when it comes to armor, Technomancers can use the Borealis set or armor with no set bonus if you aren't doing any type of freeze build. Pyromancers use the Akari set, Tricksters have no specific set to use in the meta, and Devastators use the Seismic Commander set. So now that we went over the weapons, the mods on the weapons, and the armor sets, the last thing to do is put them all together and make the class tree that everyone is using. For starters, the Devastator and Pyromancers are using the bottom tree, and the Technomancers and Tricksters are actually using the top tree. Now, I am not saying that the other trees aren't being used by other people, but these are the class trees that most of the Outriders community are using, and it's typically because they do the most damage. If you take all of that stuff that we just mentioned, the weapons, the armor, the class tree, we can call this a cookie cutter build because it is what everyone is using because it is the most optimal build for damage. Hence why it's part of the meta. 
The issue with this is that we have two other class trees for each of the classes that aren't being used or enough or enough for it to be considered part of the meta. While a fraction of the community may experiment with them, it will never be meta unless one of two things happen. Either we get nerfs or buffs. While nerfing things doesn't really solve the issue and can potentially cause more issues, I am pretty much sure that I can speak for the entire Outriders community on this one. Buffing the other class trees so that they can at least come close to or surpass the damage that the current class trees in the meta are doing is something we want. For example, the Trickster's main class tree is the top tree. If you try to make an AP build, which is also an anomaly build that is the bottom tree, the damage doesn't even come close to what the top tree does. Now, if you actually nerf the class trees in the meta, the devs are just gonna make it that much harder to do damage. So it would be better just to bring the damage from the other trees in line with the trees that are in the current meta. This could in fact cause a shift in the meta, that way not everyone is using just one class tree and make other builds like a support build and make other builds like a support build actually viable to use in the game. Now, I understand that there are tons of issues in Outriders that need to be fixed before we even think about a change in the meta right now, but I feel that a change in the meta at least should come every quarter to every two quarters. The game is still newish and still kind of broken in a bad way, but that doesn't stop people from playing it and need I say, still having fun playing Outriders. Even though I have gone through countless frustrations with this game, I still find the time to have fun, but that's due to the community. Whether I am running things with friends, doing free carries and expeditions in Eye of the Storm, or just chatting about the game in my Discord server with the Outriders community. I just wish that there were more builds that we can experiment with that can do big damage and be viable in the endgame content like the ones in the meta. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with the game towards the near future. Let me know what you guys think about the current meta as well as the cookie cutter builds we currently have in the game down in the comment section below. And that my friends brings us to the end of the video. Need a place to play Outriders? Come and join the Everything Outriders Discord. All platforms are welcome. You can make new friends, we do free carries for every expedition and Eye of the Storm, get detailed information such as data mines, patch notes, lore, and we now allow modded lobbies with high restrictions as well. We have over 400 members and it's growing every day, so come and join us. A link to the Discord will be in the description box below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.